In Orthodox Christian tradition the Merbearers Greek, Merferoi Latin, Merferi, Slavonic, Zeni Maronisitsi Romanian, Mironocyte are the individuals mentioned in the New Testament who were directly involved in the burial or who discovered the empty tomb following the resurrection of Jesus. The term traditionally refers to the women with myrrh who came to the tomb of Christ early in the morning to find it empty. In Western Christianity, the two women at the tomb, three Marys or other variants are the terms normally used. Also included are Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who took the body of Jesus down from the cross, embalmed it with myrrh and aloes, wrapped it in clean linen, and placed it in a new tomb. Matthew chapter 27 verses 55 to 61, Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 to 10, Mark 15 40 to 16 11, Luke 23 50 to 24 10, John 19 38 to 2018. The women followed Jesus during his earthly ministry in Galilee, providing for him and his followers out of their own means. Mark chapter 15 verse 41. They remained faithful to him even during the most dangerous time of his arrest and execution, and not only stood by the cross, but accompanied him to his burial, noticing where the tomb was located. Because of the impending Sabbath, it was necessary for the burial preparations to be brief. Jewish custom at the time dictated that mourners return to the tomb every day for 3 days. Once the Sabbath had passed, the women returned at the earliest possible moment, bringing myrrh to anoint the body. It was at this point that the resurrection was revealed to them, and they were commissioned to go and tell the apostles. They were, in effect, the apostles to the apostles. For this reason, the myrrh-bearing women, especially Mary Magdalene, are sometimes referred to as equal to the apostles. Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, John chapter 19 verse 38. He went to Pontius Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus and, together with Nicodemus, hurriedly prepared the body for burial. He donated his own new tomb for the burial. A native of Arimathea, he was apparently a man of wealth, and probably a member of the Sanhedrin which is the way the biblical Greek, Bouliots, literally, counselor, is often interpreted in Matthew chapter 27 verse 57 and Luke chapter 23 verse 50. Joseph was an honorable counselor, who waited, or, was searching for the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 15 verse 43. Luke describes him as a good man and just. Luke chapter 23 verse 50. Nicodemus Greek Nicodemos was a Pharisee and also a member of the Sanhedrin, who is first mentioned early in the Gospel of John when he visits Jesus to listen to his teachings, but he comes by night out of fear. John chapter 3 verses 1 to 21. He is mentioned again when he states the teaching of the law of Moses concerning the arrest of Jesus during the Feast of Tabernacles John chapter 7 verses 45 to 51. He is last mentioned following the crucifixion, when he and Joseph of Arimathea prepare the body of Jesus for burial John chapter 19 verses 39 to 42. There is an apocryphal gospel of Nicodemus that purports to be written by him. Topic. Names of the Merbearers The myrrh bearers are traditionally listed as Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James and Jose's Mary, the wife of Cleopas Martha of Bethany, sister of Lazarus Mary of Bethany, sister of Lazarus Joanna, the wife of Chusa the steward of Herod Antipas Salome, the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee Susanna Joseph of Arimathea Nicodemus there are also generally accepted to be other merbearers whose names are not known. Topic: <inaudible> Liturgical references. In the Eastern Orthodox and Greek Catholic churches, the third Sunday of Pascha, i.e. the second Sunday after Easter, is called the Sunday of the Merbearers. The scripture readings appointed for the services on this day emphasize the role of these individuals in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Matin's Gospel, Mark chapter 16 verses 9 to 20, Divine Liturgy Epistle, Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 and Gospel, Mark chapter 15 verse 43 minus 16 to 8. Since this day commemorates events surrounding not only the resurrection but also the entombment of Christ, some of the hymns from Holy Saturday are repeated. These include the troparion of the day, the noble Joseph, but with a new line added at the end, commemorating the resurrection, and the doxticone at the Vespers Apostitia, Joseph together with Nicodemus.
The week that follows is called the Week of the Merbearers, and the troparion mentioned above is used every day at the canonical hours and the Divine Liturgy. The doxticon is repeated again at Vespers on Wednesday and Friday evenings. Many of the Merbearers also have separate feast days on which they are commemorated individually in the Menion. There are numerous liturgical hymns which speak of the Merbearers, especially in the Sunday Octoechos and in the Pentecostarian. Every Sunday, there is a special hymn that is chanted at Matins and the Midnight Office, called the Hypako, Greek, Ypakoi Slavonic, Upa Kappa Oi, which means, sent, and refers to the Merbearing women being sent to announce the resurrection to the Apostles. There are several prominent Orthodox cathedrals and churches named after the Merbearers. They celebrate their patronal feast day on the Sunday of the Merbearers. Topic: <inaudible> Role of the Merbearers. In the Gospels, especially the Synoptics, women play a central role as eyewitness at Jesus' death, entombment, and in the discovery of the empty tomb. All three Synoptics repeatedly make women the subject of verbs of seeing, clearly presenting them as eyewitnesses. The presence of women as the key witnesses who discover the empty tomb has been seen as increasing the credibility of the testimony, since, in the contemporary culture Jewish and Greco-Roman, one might expect a fabrication to place men, and especially numerous and important men, at this critical place, rather than just some grieving women. C. H. Dodd considered the narrative in John to be self-authenticating arguing that no one would make up the notion that Jesus had appeared to the little-known woman, Mary Magdalene. However, some passages in the Mishnah, Yebamoth 16-7, Ketubot 2-5, Ediyat 3-6, indicate that women could give testimony if there was no male witness available. Also, Josephus and Pliny the Younger have used women as witnesses to their claims. In addition, Paul does not mention the women. Bart D. Ehrman argues. One of Mark's overarching themes is that virtually no one during the ministry of Jesus could understand who he was. His family didn't understand. His townspeople didn't understand. The leaders of his own people didn't understand. Not even the disciples understood in Mark. Especially not the disciples. For Mark, only outsiders have an inkling of who Jesus was, the unnamed woman who anointed him, the centurion at the cross. Who understands at the end? Not the family of Jesus. Not the disciples. It's a group of previously unknown women, dot the women at the tomb. All three synoptics name two or three women on each occasion in the Passion Resurrection narratives where they are cited as eyewitnesses. The Torah's required two or three witnesses Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15 in a statute that had exerted influence beyond legal courts and into situations in everyday life where accurate evidence was needed. Among the named women, and some are left anonymous, Mary Magdalene is present in all four Gospel accounts, and Mary the mother of James is present in all three synoptics. However, variations exist in the lists of each Gospel concerning the women present at the death, entombment, and discovery. For example, Mark names three women at the cross and the same three who go to the tomb, but only two are observed to be witnesses at the burial. Based on this, and similar examples in Matthew and Luke, Richard Baucom argued that the evangelists showed scrupulous care, and were careful to name precisely the women who were known to them as witnesses to these crucial events. Since there would be no other reason, besides interest in historical accuracy, not to simply use the same set of characters from one scene to another, Mark's account which in the earliest extant manuscripts ends abruptly and claims that the women told no one. The Gospels of Matthew and Mark do not present any further involvement at the tomb. Luke describes Peter as running to the tomb to check for himself, and John adds that the beloved disciple did so too, the beloved disciple outrunning Peter. See also Life of Jesus in the New Testament Saintes Marys de la Mer The Three Marys Bereavement in Judaism Holy Anointing Oil Topic. References Topic. External links Sunday of the Holy Merbearing Women Icon and Synaxarian